The second intermediate period marks a period when ancient Egypt fell into disarray for a second time, between the end of the Middle Kingdom and the start of the New Kingdom. It is best known as the period when the Hyksos made their appearance in Egypt and whose reign comprised the 15th dynasty, end of the Middle Kingdom. The brilliant Egyptian 12th dynasty came to an end at the end of the 19th century BC with the death of Queen Sobernefru. Apparently, she had no heirs, causing the 12th dynasty to come to a sudden end, and, with it, the golden age of the Middle Kingdom, it was succeeded by the much weaker 13th dynasty of Egypt. Retaining the seat of the 12th dynasty, the 13th dynasty ruled from Ijtawi near Memphis and El Lisht, just south of the apex of the Nile Delta. The 13th dynasty is notable for the accession of the first formally recognized Semitic king, Kondya. The 13th dynasty proved unable to hold on to the entire territory of Egypt, however, and a provincial ruling family of Canaanite descent in Avaris, located in the marshes of the eastern delta, broke away from the central authority to form the 14th dynasty. 15th dynasty the 15th dynasty dates approximately from 1650 to 1550 BC. Known rulers of the 15th dynasty are as follows. Salitus, Sakir Ha, Kyan, Apophis, 1590, BC 1550 BC, Karmudi, 1550 to 1540 BC. The 15th dynasty of Egypt was the first Hyksos dynasty, ruled from avarice, without control of the entire land. The Hyksos preferred to stay in northern Egypt since they infiltrated from the northeast. The names and order of kings is uncertain. The Turin king list indicates that there were six Hyksos kings, with an obscure Kamudi listed as the final king of the 15th dynasty. The surviving traces on the X figure appears to give the figure 8 which suggests that the summation should be read as six kings ruling 108 years. Some scholars argue there were two Apophis kings named Apepa I and Apepa II. But this is primarily due to the fact there are two known prenomens for this king, Iwoser and Eknonra. However, the Danish Egyptologist Kim Reiholt maintains in his study of the Second Intermediate Period that these prenomens all refer to one man, A. Pepper I, who ruled Egypt for 40 plus X years. This is also supported by the fact that this king employed a third prenomen during his reign, Nebkapishra. Apophis likely employed several different prenomens throughout various periods of his reign. This scenario is not unprecedented, as later kings, including the famous Rameses II and Seti II, are known to have used two different prenomens in their own reigns. 16th Dynasty the 16th dynasty ruled the Theban region in Upper Egypt for 70 years. Of the two chief versions of Manetho's Egypt Shikar dynasty the 16th is described by the more reliable Africanus's Shepherd Hyksos kings, but by Eusebius as Theban, Reiholt, followed by Boreal, in reconstructing the Turin canon, interpreted a list of Thebes-based kings to constitute Manetho's dynasty the 16th. Although this is one of Reiholt's most debatable and far-reaching conclusions, for this reason other scholars do not follow Reiholt and see only insufficient evidence for the interpretation of the 16th dynasty as Theban. The continuing war against dynasty the 15th dominated the short-lived 16th dynasty. The armies of the 15th dynasty, winning town after town from their southern enemies, continually encroached on the 16th dynasty territory, eventually threatening and then conquering Thebes itself. In his study of the Second Intermediate Period, the Egyptologist Kim Reiholt has suggested that the Dumos the first sued for a truce in the latter years of the dynasty, but one of his predecessors, Nebiri Raw I, may have been more successful and seems to have enjoyed a period of peace in his reign. Famine, which had plagued Upper Egypt during late 13th dynasty and the 14th dynasty, also blighted the 16th dynasty. Most evidently during and after the reign of Neferhotep III, 
from Reiholt's reconstruction of the Turin canon, 15 kings of the dynasty can now be named, five of whom appear in contemporary sources. While most likely rulers based in Thebes itself, some may have been local rulers from other important upper Egyptian towns, including Abygos, El Kab and Edfu. By the reign of Nabiri or I, the realm controlled by the 16th dynasty extended at least as far north as Hu and south to Edfu. Not listed in the Turin canon is Wepwama Temsaf, who left Estella at Abydos and was likely a local kinglet of the Abydos dynasty. Reiholt gives the list of kings of the 16th dynasty as shown in the table below. Others, such as Help van Dyslian, Bennett combined some of these rulers with the 17th dynasty of Egypt. The estimated dates come from Bennett's publication, Abydos Dynasty. The Abydos dynasty may have been a short-lived local dynasty ruling over part of Upper Egypt during the Second Intermediate Period in Ancient Egypt, and was contemporary with the 15th and 16th dynasties. Approximately from 1650 to 1600 BC, the existence of an Abydos dynasty was first proposed by Detlef Frank and later elaborated on by Egyptologist Kim Reiholt in 1997. The existence of the dynasty may have been vindicated in January 2014, when the tomb of the previously unknown pharaoh Seneb K was discovered in Abydos. The dynasty tentatively includes four rulers, Wepwama Temsaf, Pantjeni, Sneab, and Seneb K. The royal necropolis of the Abydos dynasty was found in the southern part of Abydos, in an area called Anubis Mountain in ancient times. The rulers of the Abydos dynasty placed their burial ground adjacent to the tombs of the Middle Kingdom rulers. 17th Dynasty Around the time Memphis and Itj Tawi fell to the Hyksos, the native Egyptian ruling house in Thebes declared its independence from Itj Tawi, becoming the 17th Dynasty. This dynasty would eventually lead the War of Liberation that drove the Hyksos back into Asia. The Theban-based 17th dynasty restored numerous temples throughout Upper Egypt while maintaining peaceful trading relations with the Hyksos kingdom in the north. Indeed, Senecton Ramos, the first king in the line of Amoside kings, even imported white limestone from the Hyksos-controlled region of Tura to make a granary door at the Temple of Karnak. However, his successors, the final two kings of this dynasty, Sikonon Ratao and Karmos are traditionally credited with defeating the Hyksos in the course of the Wars of Liberation. With the creation of the 18th dynasty around 1550 BC the New Kingdom period of Egyptian history begins with Amos I, its first pharaoh completing the expulsion of the Hyksos from Egypt and placing the country, once again, under centralized administrative control. Bibliography Von Beckerart, Jürgen, Unter Suchung and Zer Politischen Geschichte der Zweitens Wischens it in Egypt in Egyptologische Forschungen, Heft 23. Gluckstadt, 1965. Gardner, Sir Allen, Egypt of the Pharaohs. Oxford, 1964-1961. Hayes, William C. Egypt. From the Death of Amenemes III to Sikonanra II, Chapter 2, Volume 2 of the Cambridge Ancient History. Revised Edition, 1965. James, T.G.H. Egypt. From the Expulsion of the Hyksos to Amenophis I, Chapter 8, Volume 2 of the Cambridge Ancient History. Revised edition, 1965, Kitchen, Kenneth A. Further notes on New Kingdom chronology and history, Chronique d'Egypte, 63, pp. 313-324, Oren, Eliezer D. The Hyksos, New Historical and Archaeological Perspectives Philadelphia, 1997, Reiholt, Kim. The Political Situation in Egypt During the Second Intermediate Period c. 1800-1550 BC, Museum Tusculane Impress, 1997, ISBN 87-7289-421-0, Van Setters, John, The Hyksos, 
A New Investigation, New Haven, 1966.